and what happens next for those protesters who were arrested. The National Desk, Jeff Harris, is talking with police and legal experts to get those answers. What did you find out, Jeff? So in the past two weeks, more than 2,000 arrests have been made at those pro-Palestinian protests across the country. And many of those students are now facing criminal charges. But experts we spoke with say how those charges play out and if they will stick falls into the hands of each jurisdiction. It's wild to see the different district attorney's offices across the country and how they're reacting. Take Austin, Texas, for example, where attorney Jorge Vela works. Last week, Travis County prosecutors dropped charges against 57 people arrested during protests. They were quick to analyze each of these cases and determine that none of the arrests would withstand a probable cause attack. But Vela tells us not every district attorney will feel the same way. I think there are other district attorney's office that feel the opposite, that these individuals have crossed a line that go over and above their protections under the First Amendment. Meaning those arrested could then face criminal charges, but the severity of that charge will likely vary depending on the crime. Attacking a police officer or attacking a fellow student um, those are going to come with stiffer penalties. Plus, Breitner Smith says prior criminal history could also become a factor. Just a trespassing on a campus and not leaving when you're told, you know, that's that's a relatively low level crime unless you've committed it 50 times in the last couple of years. Now, over the last few days, several schools have made agreements with pro-Palestinian protesters to end their encampments on campus. Northwestern, Brown, Rutgers, and the University of Minnesota have all now reached deals. Reporting for the National Desk, I'm Jeff Harris.